In this video, I will show you how to plot a adiabatic mixing process for two streams of moist air on the psychrometric chart. And also, I'll give you an explanation as to why uh, this is a, how it should be done on the psychrometric chart. Now, mixing of two streams of uh, moist air happens a lot in air conditioning practice. Now, we often have a cooler, more humid air uh, or a cooler, more uh, drier air that mixes with a warmer, more humid air stream. And then um, after mixing, you have a, a mixed air stream with a different uh, set of properties. Okay, in our analysis, we have to apply some simplification and assumptions so that uh, we can apply some rigorous math uh, uh, relations. Here we use this control volume. This is the control volume. And uh, we assume there are two inlets to the control volume. Um, airstream 1, airstream 2. These two streams of uh, moist air, each has a mass flow rate. This is a mass flow rate. And each has a dry bulb temperature. Each has a relative humidity or a hum humidity ratio. Now here what's shown is humidity ratio or specific humidity or absolute humidity, which from, uh, from this value and the dry bulb temperature and also knowing the, uh, uh, the, the pressure of uh, the moist air, you can calculate the relative humidity. So we assume all this process happens at ambient atmospheric pr pressure. So uh, that's, that's a, a common uh, implied constraint in air conditioning analysis. That's the air pressure is atmospheric pressure, one atmosphere. So airstream one and airstream two has a set of uh, uh, values for air flow rate and uh, the temperature and humidity. So after mixing, um, we have uh, a mixed one stream of uh, air coming out of the control volume. This Air stream has a mass flow rate. Again, this mass flow rate is, is, is uh, expressed in terms of uh, dry air, and we know that uh, uh, this result should be uh, should follow the uh, the mass conservation uh, principle. And the mixed air would have a uh, dry bulb temperature and the specific humidity as well, and. Uh, these two quantities uh, need to be determined based on the conditions of the two mixing streams. And that's what uh, this psychometric chart analysis will allow us to do, is to uh, allow us to locate the conditions of the outcome of a adiabatic uh, mixing process. Now, what we have learned is that um, uh, the mass conservation and the uh, energy conservation principles should be uh, applicable in this adiabatic mixing process. Uh, it's adiabatic mixing, so there's no heat transfer. There's no heat transfer into the control volume. This control volume itself is, is well insulated. And I'm uh, drawing these little spikes to, uh, to remind you that this is a adiabatic. This is a well insulated uh, box. Um, air is allowed to flow through and come, come out, but uh, there's no um, heat transfer across the boundary of uh, the control volume. So this is the mass conservation. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, this is the energy conservation uh, principle. And uh, uh, this is the, this is the, the mass conservation principle. And we also have uh, a another one, which is um, okay. That's the mass conservation uh, equation, but th that's the mass conservation for the uh, for the water vapor. This is assuming there's no uh, condensation taking place uh, in this mixing process. Um, that can be shown to be true, but uh, we we can also uh, write this equation. This is also mass conservation equation. Um, MA1, MA2 should be equal to MA3 uh, 
for mass conservation of the dry air. Um, that's not uh, going to be used. This, this, this is not directly useful in solving the problem, so I'm going to uh, erase it to uh, avoid confusion. Um, but here we have the underlined mass conservation and energy conservation equation. So from the, um, the, the practice that the people use, engineers use, using a psychrometric chart, we know uh, we can rearrange the equations and actually essentially solve the equations. And we can show that uh, uh, there should be such a proportional relationship. And so if we know the mass flow rate of uh, stream one and stream two, then we can specifically, we can uniquely identify, we can locate, um, we can put the um, point three on the psychrometric chart. That's if you draw a line segment between uh, one and a two, and then you uh, locate point three so that uh, the line segments um, three, two, and one, three, their length ratio is uh, the reciprocal of uh, the mass flow rate of the corresponding line, se line segments. Okay, so because this this is the uh, uh, this is the line segment of this. This is the length of that line segment, and this is the, the length of this line segment. So um, geometrically, uh, by knowing this relation, you can uh, specifically locate point three on the psychrometric chart, and then you can read the conditions of uh, the psychrometric uh, of uh, uh, point three, and you can get uh, uh, you can get the information. You can get T three dry bulb, and you can get omega. Three. All right. So this sounds pretty straightforward, but uh, what's not explained is why, and I'll explain that in the following slide. Okay. Here we have a psychrometric chart, and the problem we had is essentially essentially this: we have uh, this problem. We we have two points. Let's just put two points on the psychrometric psychrometric chart randomly. This is point one, and uh, um, this is point one, and there's another point two. This is point two, and these represent the conditions of uh, the um, two mixing streams of air. Um, their temperature. We know. Uh, the horizontal axis is the dry bulb temperature. So this is dry bulb temperature one. Um, and the, the, the horizontal, uh, horizontal uh, axis is the humidity ratio. So this is humidity ratio one. These two coordinates specifically identify uh, point one. <laughs> Likewise, this point, point two, we have a, a dry bulb temperature two and we have a uh, humidity ratio of two. Now, what we need to show is that uh, if we have a, if we have the outcome of a adiabatic mixing process. Okay, if we have these two points as the, uh, uh, the conditions of the two mixing uh, moist air streams, first one we wanna show is that the, the, the uh, outcome of the mixing should be on a, the straight line defined by point one two. Okay, so we should uh, show it to ourselves that uh, the outcome of this mixing process should be on this straight line. Uh, it could be outside, in theory, but we'll show that it's going to be um, on the inside. Let's first show that uh, the outcome should be somewhere on this straight line. Okay, somewhere here, somewhere on the straight line. All right, here I simply copy and pasted the, the outcome of the energy balance equation and the, the graphic uh, illustration on this page to help us go towards that uh, direction. Now let's think of the enthalpy of, of moist air. All right, let's look at the, the specific enthalpy of moist air. H is, a, is the sum of H sub A and omega HW. H sub A is the specific enthalpy of uh, dry air, and omega is the specific humidity. H sub W is the enthalpy of water vapor. Then we can express 
uh, the equation above using uh, this uh, breakdown of uh, uh, the moist air uh, specific enthalpy. Okay, now I have expressed uh, the uh, ratio above uh, using the, uh, the specific uh, enthalpy of moist air uh, expression. I can further uh, replace the uh, H sub, and I can further uh, uh, rearrange this equation and uh, do it, uh, show it like this. Okay, now I have the, if I, if I replace the dry air enthalpy difference with the, the now I can further uh, replace the enthalpy difference for dry air with the product of um, specific heat of dry air and the temperature difference. And if I assume the specific enthalpy of water vapor is a constant, if I call it HW, then I'll have this relationship. And you can see uh, when I have this, um, I can easily get, I can easily show you uh, that uh, the, the point, um, point three, uh, this, this equation actually tells us, because this is equal to a constant, this is equal to uh, this constant. And we have a uh, chart that has um, T as the x-axis and omega as the uh, y-axis. So this equation itself tells us, or proves to us, that uh, the point three, the outcome of the adiabatic mixing, is on a, on a straight line defined by uh, point one and two. Now, certainly this is based on the assumption that uh, C sub PA is constant. And also, we have another, we used another uh, uh, assumption, it's H W is a constant, so we need to uh, th we need to find out if uh, these two assumptions are valid assumptions. If uh, th if these are correct, if there's uh, these are reasonable assumptions, and I'll show you uh, that in the uh, next screen. All right, let's first address this question: Is the um, specific enthalpy of water vapor a constant? Is, is HW a constant? Now it's not exactly a constant. However, um, we can show that it is a, uh, it, treating it as a constant will not introduce significant error in the uh, psychrometric analysis. This is a section of a, um, a saturated water table that I copy and paste it from a textbook. And um, you can see this uh, next to last uh, column on the left, uh, um, I'm sorry, on the right. Uh, this is the so-called evaporation, enthalpy of uh, evaporation. And this is actually the enthalpy of water vapor that's relevant to psychrometrics analysis. Okay, so in other words, uh, the specific enthalpy of water vapor we use in moist air analysis um, should take values of uh, the evaporation enthalpy. So let's see how these values change as uh, in the range of temperature that's, uh, that's relevant to uh, air conditioning. So here I picked uh, the, uh, the range of uh, temperature from uh, essentially zero degrees uh, Celsius to um, now here this section shows 70 up to 70 degrees um, Celsius. Um, we do not necessarily have to go up to 70 degrees in air conditioning, but let's say uh, in heating, in the case of heating, you, you may have a, uh, hot air that's that hot. And you can, you can see the difference between 2000, uh, 2001 and, uh, and 2333. Uh, All right, you can see the relative uh, variation of uh, uh, the enthalpy of evaporation from, from zero degrees to 70 degrees Celsius is roughly 7%. Now let's narrow that temperature range to something that's more likely to happen in air conditioning. Let's say we, we allow the temperature to uh, vary from, 2000, uh, from, from zero degrees Celsius to uh, uh, 50 degrees um, Celsius. And we can see that if we uh, look at the temperature variation from zero degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius, the enthalpy of um, evaporation changes by about uh, uh, 5%. And we, we use uh, the 5% uh, the as, as, as if it's a magic number in engineering. So uh, 
uh, we often say if it's less than 5%, then it's not a significant change. So that sort of uh, justifies uh, that we can use, we can assume the, uh, the enthalpy of uh, uh, water vapor is a constant in psychrometric analysis. Okay, so, um, and I'll, I will leave the other uh, task for you, and you can find a, uh, a thermodynamic property table and see how much the uh, dry air uh, specific heat changes in a temperature range that's relevant to air conditioning. Now, to, to summarize what we have uh, reviewed in this video, adiabatic mixing process can be conveniently analyzed using the psychrometric chart. That is, we can find the mixed condition, knowing the conditions of the two mixing streams. We also show that the straight line analysis uh, involves uh, the um, constant uh, specific heat for dry air and the constant uh, enthalpy of evaporation assumptions uh, for the um, dry air and for the water vapor. And we have shown that uh, these two assumptions are justifiable in the temperature range uh, relevant to air conditioning. And lastly, but also very importantly, we should know that uh, the method that we applied using that line segment to find the mixing uh, condition, the mixed condition of uh, two uh, of uh, a adiabatic mixing process um, has a uh, constraint that line segment one two uh, cannot cross the saturation curve. If it does, then we cannot we can no longer use the method we applied in this video.